Welcome everybody, I am Isaac Bustos. I'm here with Tonebase to talk to you about Un Dia de Noviembre, which is an iconic guitar piece uh, in our repertoire. And I'm excited that you're learning it and I'm excited to talk to you about it today. So let's do it. Un Dia de Noviembre was written in 1972. Uh, was written for a film by the same name. Uh, Un Dia de Noviembre means a day in November. Um, and it is a film by Humberto Salas that uh, touches on um, the concept of disappointment, sadness, anxiety, uh, disillusionment, uh, and the conflict that they this can bring about in a person. Um, Brower's original orchestration for this uh, piece, for the film, was a guitar, flute, bass, and percussion. Um, the piece is very effective in, uh, in the simplicity of the melody and how it helps to kind of evoke these, uh, you know, these emotions. It's uh, the simplicity of the melody really kind of sort of showcase and highlights uh, the emotional context uh, or content rather uh, of the film. Brower, in fact, uh, talks about how sometimes as musicians we get caught up in the sort of technical analysis of a musical work, which is, of course, it's only a partial analysis. Um, but he says that the context in the long run uh, is almost always the, the most influential part for a composer, um, for the inspiration of a work or how the work basically is a way for us to, to see into the composer's um, view of the world, if you will. Uh, so while many of you may not have experienced, let's say, disappointment, disillusionment, anxiety, let's say, um, at, at a level in which the film talks about, in many ways, I think all of us as human beings, we can connect to these emotions um, because we have all experienced them at different levels. So what's exciting about the piece and what makes it so beautiful is how effective it is in communicating these emotions. And our technique has to be a vehicle through which we can facilitate the communication of these emotions through the guitar. So the choices that we make for fingerings, the choices that we make for dynamics, the choices that we make for left hand fingerings, right hand fingerings, um, articulations, all of those things play into our ability to communicate with others. The great power of music is that it's very communicative and it has the ability to communicate in a way that language doesn't. Um, you can, for example, write a paper on emotion uh, and, or give a discourse on emotion, but three or four notes from this piece can actually evoke it and really make you feel it much more effectively. Uh, so that's what's exciting about the piece. That's what makes it so beautiful. Um, and I think um, as we talk through it, we'll try to tie it always in a way to the context um, and have our fingers let our soul speak sort of, you know, um, so that we can, you know, we can communicate with other people. It'll make us connect as human beings. Um, so that's what's exciting about this piece. And that's what I look forward to talking about in the next couple of videos. One of the most important things that we need to recognize immediately is that the piece is essentially in two sections an A section that's in A minor and a second section that's in A major. Uh, the A section actually is even kind of a mini section of all it by itself. It has an, kind of the first two lines are in, you know, uh, it's, it's a mini A, you can say. The second, uh, third and fourth line are like a uh, A prime. And then you have a return of the, the first sort of, you know, A section um, uh, uh, at the end of it. So what I'd like to discuss today is, you know, um, making an association with, um, uh, with the orchestration uh, and talking about legato uh, and how our left hand fingering can actually help us make those connections um, so that you are much more effective in, in trying to uh, evoke the emotional things that we talked about in the other video. So let's get started. One of the first things that I think it's best for us to do is to separate uh, in the A section, uh, the first section, separate the melody from the accompaniment. And you actually want to do this throughout the entire piece. Um, one of the reasons is because you want to have a clear 
sense of how you want the melody to sound. And you also want to learn how to connect the melody uh, very much the same way, for example, that a flute would, right? A flute only plays the one single line. And we want to try to imitate that, um, uh, that sound with the guitar, but also the idea of legato playing, right? Connecting the notes. So um, one of the easiest ways to think of connection on the guitar is to always try to reach the notes at the same time. Uh, with both the left hand and the right hand. If you uh, mute or reach the note with the left hand first, you'll mute with the left hand, or vice versa, if you, if you reach the note with the right hand first, you will disconnect. So let me demonstrate this. If we play the melody by itself, and let's say I'm gonna do it with the right hand, um, and you play, and I put my eye finger first, see I've already muted the note. The same thing will happen if I put my first finger down and I mute with the left hand. I've already muted the note. And that's where this connection happens, right? And, uh, and we don't get legato playing. So you have to basically have uh, coordination uh, of both hands. So here's legato. And now I've reached the string with the right hand and the left hand at the same time. Right? So now we're connected, playing legato. And you want to work this out in such a way where you kind of do it slowly first to kind of think and anticipate the note. And then eventually you'll get much more comfortable doing it. Okay, so now let's talk about expression. So now that you've experimented with legato playing, let's play the melody by itself. Um, you want to make sure that when you're playing, you're always clear uh, with your texture, that the accompaniment is not louder than the melody or that the bass is not louder than the melody, uh, unless the bass is, of course, the melody. But you want to be clear, okay? And one of the best ways for us to do this uh, and to understand it and achieve it is to separate out the lines. So if you play the melody by itself, you can experiment, but you can also hear it, what it sounds like by itself. So let's play the melody by itself. The beauty of doing that is that if you separate the melody, you can then focus on crafting that part of the piece. Uh, and that could be very exciting because um, I'll try different things and you'll see how those things can communicate differently. Now I'm going to play the melody bright. versus playing it warm. What if I used more vibrato? Okay, what if I use even more rubato? Okay, you see how every time that you treat the melody differently, it communicates differently, right? And what you do with that melody and how you craft it, it will be based on your personal, uh, your personal view of the piece. And how you want to communicate that will guide your hands in how to do it. Um, but technically speaking, 
it's, be it's best to come to a clear understanding of how you want to do that by separating out the melody from everything else. So if you take the melody by itself, you'll be much more effective um, in having uh, a clearer way of approaching this piece.